Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. This is Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Uh, for the next hour, we'll be talking to you about local news, regional news, and all that is fit to print in the cannabis world. Joining me today is Kurt Dukoch, Raymond Fletcher, and William Beach Baker. And of course, behind the board, making me sound good every week is Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, this Stop is- Stop clucking around. Stop clucking around, huh? Um, well, no surprise here. The, the state, Clark County, the city are all tangling over medical marijuana. They're having, they're fighting the fight because, you know, pretty much the state has told Clark County and the city to go cluck themselves. Um, the Clark County got the jump on everybody and approved 18 dispensary applications. And then the city approved, what was it, Kurt, 10 or 11? No, the city, uh, the city approved, or the state, or the, the Clark, city approved 12. The city approved 12 and Clark County approved 18. But they go up to the state and 10 of them got approved for the state for Clark County and eight got rejected. And then the cities, you know, similar stuff happened at the city. So, so right now we have we have eight dispensaries in Clark County that were approved by the county, but not approved by the state, and eight that were approved by the state, but not approved by the county. And then there's ten all together in the county that were approved by both. So. Yeah. So that sounds really confusing. And if it sounds confusing to you, guess what? It's confusing to the officials also. So um, the state's basically telling Clark County to go cluck themselves because they, the state, you know, the state told everybody to wait on this process. Let us do the approval process from uh, the non-identified applications. And then we'll, you know, then we'll tell you who passed the state process and you can look at those and approve zoning and, and all the state asked Clark County or the city to do was approve the location. Is it okay for this location or not okay for this location? And when the city started disapproving people because of U-turns, because of neighbors, because, well, neighbors are actually kind of okay in the approval process, but U-turns or because there was, oh, there's just, uh, there's a dispensary two blocks down the road. We can't approve this one. That's when they started getting themselves into really hot water. Um so regardless of what happens, there are eight dispensaries that have been cleared the state and they've cleared, uh, you know, Clark County's process. And so they're okay. But what happens to the other 10, the other 10 that didn't make it on uh, at the state? What do you think, Kurt? Well, uh, right now, the uh, county manager, Don Brunette, sent a letter Thursday to Chad Weston, who's the bureau chief of uh, the Nevada Division of Public and Behavioral Health, who oversees the medical marijuana program. And uh, the county wanted to know what happens if the dispensaries that received a provisional certificate from the state but lack county approval. Uh, the county asked if the state will, addition, uh, will issue additional provisional certificates to ranked applicants beyond the 18 dispensaries allowed in the unincorporated areas. So now the county is turning around and asking the state for more. And the state is not, and the state's not going to do that. The state has basically, they, they, they are, these are the ones that we've approved. They've already kind of dismissed all the people that have, that were doing the approval process. And so to recall those people are now that the state has to ask extra money for the budget um, to, to get these people down here to approve um, these additional locations. So both sides have attorneys, but you know, it, you know, who's going to pull the trigger on this? I w I'm wondering. 
All right. So I, I, do, I really don't think that. I think that this is going to be a huge tangle. And sincerely, uh, I was over at Tick's house, uh, Tick Seegerbloom's house last week. And he says that he hopes that it's not going to get into a legal tangle because this can delay the process of the dispensaries opening for almost, you know, a year or so. And if that happens, then then the Clark County is not going to approve anybody opening dispensaries i'm not dispensaries but grows or production facilities because who's going to want to have all this cannabis on hand with no place to sell it that's when diversion starts happening that's when uh you know that's when people start failing in their businesses and and to delay the process tick said to delay this process it could be you know it could be really detrimental to the whole whole process uh, it, it, it'd be huge we got people who've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars already waiting to open these businesses and if you put them on hold for another year you're going to have investors and all sorts of other people backing out and that could cause the business to fail before it even gets started and that's true so that's i guess that's one more way of weeding out the process because um if you think about it they approved everybody for grows and everybody for productions except those people that withdrew their names for grows and productions and the one guy in nye and the one guy in nye county <laughs> um but to give everybody those grows and those productions um i think is going to cause a huge you know a huge uh, excess in in the in the industry because Okay, all the people that got dispensaries also got production and grows, like 90% of them. Yeah, but so are they the going to buy stuff from their own cultivation and their first. own production first before they go outside to other cultivations and other productions? But we see we see through the other states that have successfully launched these programs like Colorado and Washington that the, the average dispensary needs three or four production facilities just to keep their supply in, in stock. So if, you know, unless they have a humongous facility, they're going to need those other people just so they can keep their shelves stocked. Well, that's true. I think well, I think initially, though, that people are going to be using their own, you know, their own production stuff. So, um we were we were actually we went to tick's house I, I went to tick's house for a fundraiser um and there were a lot of people there and they were discussing this very thing uh then right afterwards then right afterwards there was a forum that was sponsored by the jewish federation of las vegas that uh talked about other you know other stuff in the industry um one of the things that i thought was super interesting is that a woman at the end of uh, at the end of this talk, got up and asked if there were any long-term uh, research results on cannabis in the body. And everybody on the panel was saying, oh, no, no, no. And I was just like, I raised my hand and said, I want to answer that. And Kurt's like pounding on me, like, quit, 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 like normal. Um, but in this Jewish Federation, you know, sponsored event, that all of the panelists said, no, there's no research, that long-term research on this just baffled me because 90% of the long-term research has come out of Israel, out of Tel Aviv. It's a, it's a state-sponsored program that they're giving cannabis to their elders. They're giving cannabis to people with Alzheimer's and dementia in these state hospitals. And when I answered, oh yeah, that this is what this is where the research is coming out of, um, it, it baffled me that there were there were plenty of um there were plenty of uh, Jewish people on the panel themselves that, oh, no, we, we have no idea where there's any research coming out of anywhere, uh, you know, and, and that they needed to be told by somebody in the audience that, yeah, you know, um, you know, Israel, that's where the research is coming out of. And so, you know, you guys can you guys can uh, check my comments there. Um, so. The panel also basically just discussed um, impaired drunk driving, legal status of, uh, of the people that have spent years here growing, like me, like Kurt, uh, like many of our friends, uh, DUI, DUID law, and uh, a lot of other, a lot of other interesting subjects. 
Um, the, this forum was held at the United Way of Southern Nevada. And Chris G said in her comments basically that there's still work to be done, but we've got this far already. And so we're super happy uh, that this panel was held. Uh, this panel was attended by Steve Wolfson. Um, he is our district attorney. I talked to him about, you know, getting reelected, congratulating him on getting reelected. Um, talked to him about coming on the show. Talked to him about coming on the show about 15 times. This is about the 15th or 16th time I've invited him on. I know, Raymond, you've invited him on several times, haven't you? I've, I've sent emails and reached out to his office and everything, and he's typically uh, too busy for us cannabis people. So, Steve, if you're listening, we're, there's nothing to be afraid of. Come on the show. Yeah, I won't. I won't hold your toes to the fire or anything. I won't fire up in front of you. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You are a legal cannabis patient, right? Uh, but still, this is technically a public place. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and so, basically, uh, at this Jewish Federation panel of businesses, um, a, lo a lot of people that were just interested in the industry were there. I think also. Uh, their Las Vegas Review Journal was there, and they took some pictures of my friends Bruce Gale and uh, Jason Sturtzman. We can board members. We can board members, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and and it actually was just a really nice dinner, uh, you know, a nice uh, nice panel, nice talk, everything. It was actually uh, moderated by uh, Mike Hengel from the Review Journal. He's an editor. Yep. Yep, exactly. But what what got me about this is two of the panelists, Ed Bernstein and Carlos Blumberg, Blumberg uh -huh. they were talking about uh, the political debates intensifying with the uh, possibility of recreational being on the ballot in 2016. And what basically stood out to me is Bernstein saying his clients have spent money preparing to comply with medical marijuana rules and that they deserve first crack at the money to be made from recreational now here's the thing his clients are not the only ones that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars look at all the others that were awarded contracts by either the county or the city and didn't get one from the state or vice versa you know we were just talking about uh we were just talking about that the state is telling uh clark county and the city to go collect themselves uh, so what are you thinking about all of the, uh, you know, the potential lawsuits, potential thing, you know, potential stuff coming up, Raymond? Again, my whole Dion Warwick psychic friends thing, I told them from the onset that the way that they were proceeding, they're going to end up with lawsuits. And that's what people are now talking about that were approved at the state level, but not at the county and the city and the county commissioners, my good friend, Steve have only themselves to blame because they were the one. No one forced them to have these marathon hearings. No one forced them to change the rules in the middle of a hearing. That's true. And, and Raymond, you know what the thing is, is that I love Raymond. He has the power to piss people off by talking to him. He's my kind of guy. You were up there saying that you protested you were saying i i protest this what i actually say is okay mr chairman i object to this application not on the uh, merits but on the process and i objected to the nine subsequent applications thereafter not on the merit but on the process the only application i objected to on the merit was the one submitted by uh oh my goodness Terratech. I, no it wasn't it was uh herfs oh terrible herbs yeah because they're, they're just terrible they are terrible you know uh and dude troy herbs actually sat down with me he told me he would make an effort to make his gas stations more accessible on the contrary they're more inaccessible and if you want to offer medication to patients and we're not just talking about able potty people we're talking about people with cancer people with hiv people with aids people with so many debilitating issues that you know mobility may be a problem for them easy access may be a problem and and if the guy in a wheelchair has to shake chains or do whatever i can to make sure that every single american citizen has the op opportunity to equal access then so be it i will gladly fight that fight well you know raymond uh you and i have been you know you and i've been together when we go into like different stores and stuff like that and and the ones that you can't get your wheelchair through 
are the terrible gas stations, aren't they? They are, you know, but thankfully working with you together, we can get this done, you know, and that's the most important thing. And step by step, we're, we're going to do this. I think, I think that we can do it. So um, we are going to move along and talk about the veterans here in Nevada. Veterans here in Nevada. If you guys remember about, I don't know, about a year ago, Dr. Dave Udy got PTSD approved as a qualifying condition for Nevada. Uh, Dr. udy has been working with We Can for quite a while. He has his own company called Pro Caregivers also. But he originally sent the state a letter basically asking for PTSD to be added as a qualifying condition. Well, the Veterans Affairs about two, three, four, four years ago, maybe in 2010, approved cannabis use for veterans um, and that they would not take veterans benefits away from veterans that were using cannabis in a cannabis approved state. But veterans are now coming out and saying that they want access to cannabis through their doctor at Veterans Affairs because they can't afford the medication uh, as veterans. Well, a lot of the veterans don't have a secondary primary care physician. Their only primary care physician is the VA physician that they have. So they need, they need the VA physicians, not just the Veterans Administration to say it's okay to use it. They need the physicians to say, yes, we will recommend that you use this product so that they can they can actually get onto the state programs and use the product. Well, well they, you know, everybody that, that are retired soldiers, that when they bring up um, cannabis to their doctors, the, cannab uh, the doctors kind of just refuse to listen to them or kind of poo-poo them or, you know, kind of send them on their way. And but I, thankfully on that front, though, U.S. Representatives Earl Blumenhauer and Dana Rohrbacher, along with 10 bipartisan, both Republican and Democratic congressional co-sponsors, they introduced the Veterans Equal Access Act on the 21st of November, and it's making marking a concerted federal effort to allow our country's veterans to become medical marijuana patients in states where it's legal. This bill is basically going to overturn a ban on VA physicians recommending medical marijuana. Well, that's awesome. Um, you know, and if this is interesting to you, next week we have a special guest, Michael Krawitz. Um, he is a director of the Veterans for MMJ Access. We're going to have him on our show uh, to talk about this very subject. So if you are a veteran, um, you know, listen in next week for sure to listen to Michael and, and all your and veterans access here in Nevada. Well, Bloom, Blumenauer, to close on this one, okay. said uh, post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury are just as damaging and harmful as any injuries that are visible from the outside. And, and let me close with this on, on this because we're going to talk about it more next week. These men and women willingly put their lives on the line to defend our nation. I think we owe it to them to grant them access to medication that would relieve because i mean how many times do you see uh car bombing and all this other stuff and having to make a quick second uh decision do you shoot this woman strapped with an ied or do you let her into your compound and kill you well not since i left la i mean <laughs> these, these are serious things you know and these these are these are people that that are stuck with defending our that willingly fight for our freedom willingly fight for what we do here every week we should grant them access to medication. That's right. Veterans must be given the same rights and health care options that we give other Americans, especially when medical marijuana is concerned. So. Definitely. If it's good enough for the federal government, it should be good enough for our veterans. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, after our break, we'll have more of local news and more for and more regional news. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. 
Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Greenspot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. <laughs> Welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. Our uh, honoree for today is Charlo Green. I don't know if you guys remember her. That's the uh, businesswoman and former reporter and anchor for KTVA in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, she uh, received notice after she quit her job on air while covering the story on the Alaska Cannabis Club. Yeah, she was the one that said, cluck it, right? Yep. She said, cluck it, I quit. Right as they were doing a story about her on the news. Yeah, that about her club. Exactly. That was her cannabis club they were talking about. So um, that video went viral and it's raised some criticism over Green's conflict of interest uh, as she had reported on her own business and the way she departed it. Well, you know, she um, she actually was from Alaska. She's from Alaska and she went uh, she went to Texas to go through college. Um, in University of Texas. Uh, she's gained immense appreciation for the beauty and adventure of Alaska after being in Texas, but who wouldn't, actually? Uh, she also worked in uh, Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska. She moved from Tex- or from Alaska to Texas to go to school and then back to Alaska. Yeah, and on October 16th, High Times awarded Green its Courage in Media Award for at their 40th anniversary party in New York. And Elle magazine has also listed Green as one of the 13 most potent women in the pot industry. Potent? Potent. Potent. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Um, Alaska officials are still trying to determine whether uh, Anchorage uh, marijuana activist has campaign, uh, violated campaign finance laws. Um, she, according to agenda documents released by APOC, in order to better understand whether Green was in compliance with campaign disclosure laws, the commission asked Green in early October to produce documents uh, related to her Indiegogo uh, fundraising campaign. The campaign netted the cannabis club in Alaska over $8,400 in donations, which isn't much at all, actually. Um, she registered group with the with her group with the commission on October second, filing a handful of independent expenditures, and then she stopped and began challenging the agency's jurisdiction over her fundraising efforts. In an interview, she contended that she filed with the organization to comply with finance disclosure laws for the small amount of advocating that she did. Um, on the marijuana in effort, but she says the Indiegogo campaign should not be subject to the APOC reporting requirements because it was fundraising for her organization and not for the ballot measure. Well, that sounds understandable, then. No. Yeah. I mean, there was no political action on it, but no. All right. So, and basically, she says that um, there there are uh, the commission. Uh, a guy named Lucas at the commission, he cited at least two instances of what he believes are active campaigning from the group to support the ballot measure two listed on Green's Indiegogo website. Um, and so she 
is a, a fighter for sure, and that's why we honor you, Charlo Green. Very potent. All right. Sounds like uh, what uh, Wendy Davis was doing in Texas, they did to her <laughs> when she did her filibuster. Yeah. And they tried to say that she leaned on something, so she violated the rules. She wore a back brace, so she violated the rules. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Over in Washington, legal marijuana tax revenue is higher than predicted. Higher. Higher. <laughs> the Washington legal recreational marijuana industry may have gotten off a uh, too late start, and it's still racked with issues, but it's getting bigger and better every day. New projections are out about marijuana tax revenues in Washington, and per the Huffington Post, the most revenue, most recent revenue forecast released by the Economic Revenue Forecast Council shows that the industry is expected to bring in more than $694 million in state revenue through the middle of 2019. Well, in September alone, they brought in $25.5 million in tax revenue um, just alone. And they, they're saying that their new report... Uh, estimates more than $42.7 million in revenue by the end of next year, and uh, that's a $17.2 million increase from two months ago. Um, the report measures time in two-year budget periods from 2013 to 2015, and since they're a little bit late in starting into 2014, it's going to, you know, it's going to have a little... Uh, a little bit lower by 2015 to 2017 the projection should be up about 237 million for that year and then a pro it is estimated 415 million more is expected for the 2017 2019 biennium budget right on so money money right on i got a little lighthearted news coming out of washington what's up um you heard of the uh the uh seattle based company cut.com they were the company that put out the smoking grandmas first time smoking grandmas which just went viral all over i haven't seen smoking grandmas. you know maybe we, you and i raymond are the only two people <laughs> in america that have not seen this video i haven't <laughs> seen the egg and greek cat that everybody's talking about either <laughs> Well, there's been more than 12.5 million viewings of the lighthearted film produced by him. In less than what? Two weeks? Yeah, in less than two weeks. Wow. Yep. And Mike Gaston of Cut.com said the hardest part of the video session was finding women who fit the grandmother stereotype who had not smoked marijuana. Wow. That isn't... Well, if you got to think about it this way, you think about it that the ladies that are grandmothers now grew up in the 60s. So what are the chances that none of them have smoked pot before? Hey, bro. Granny's token. Yeah, they, <laughs> they actually had to enlist the help of a talent agency to find non-marijuana smokers. He says, it was nearly impossible to find grandmothers who haven't smoked weed for the video. He asked his own grandmother. She said she'd love to be in it, but she had already smoked it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he couldn't find a sash. Exactly, exactly. So... Yeah, so uh, now I'm gonna have to go see, look at that video, and 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 watch it because we've put it up on our Facebook site, and we've put it up on a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff, and and I haven't watched it myself because I guess I'm working all the time. Um, I haven't seen it either, but when I get home and have my Popeyes and Medicaid tonight, I think I'm gonna be medicating with Granny. Well, <laughs> we put it up on our Facebook site the 21st and we reached over 3,000 people on that on that post so wow wow mm -hmm. that's a lot of people to be reached by that. but speaking you know, of reaching people uh, we just we just changed our monthly newsletter to an online format so if you want to start receiving our monthly newsletters and invites to our events and stuff um, you can very simply sign up for our for our monthly newsletter by texting we can to 22828 and uh, that'll sign you up for our, our monthly newsletter and uh, all of our different events that we throw. You'll so, get... again, that's text we can to 22828 on your mobile. Yeah, you can just find that shared on my Facebook. I'm a stoner. I'm not going to remember that. <laughs> yes, it, it is up on our Facebook in case you forget so you don't have to go through this and try to find this one minute. Speaking of stoner, how long, how long ago do you think that that was added to the Oxford Dictionary, the word stoner? Is it in the Oxford Dictionary? Well, uh huh. 
Uh, okay, Remy. Well, <laughs> guess what was added to the 2014 Oxford Dictionary? And they made it the word of the year. Dab. No, not dab. Vape. Which, vape. You got it, Raymond. Dang. Well, that's true. So Oxford Dictionary has a word of the year, and that's a sure sign that the word has reached a critical mass. Yeah, that's Ray Raymond's vape pen he's holding yeah, his hand. Yeah, I got it. Uh, this year, the word is vape. Um, the Oxford Dictionary first added the word in August of this year and defines vape as in the verb form as to inhale and exhale the vapor produced by an electronic cigarette or similar device. I'm guessing down there that that's a similar device, Raymond. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm, right. I'm sorry. I'm stuck on this pen. Well, <laughs> yeah. He, Raymond's stuck on his pen again. Uh-oh. <laughs> well... In um, the term of electronic cigarette goes back to a 1983 article in New Society referring to the then experimental form of non-combustible cigarettes. Do you know that they've been around since 1983, non-combustible cigarettes? I didn't know cigarettes were supposed to combust. Oh. <laughs> well, we can always hope, you know. Not while I'm smoking one. Well, you know, while, while people are smoking them near me, I hope. Um, wow. So in April of this year, the United Kingdom opened a vape cafe. Um, there is a vape ban in New York and people came out and protested. So this is why Oxford Dictionary has taken this word vape and made it the word of the year. But vape is not the only word that the Oxford Dictionary has added this year. Do tell. So what do you think, Raymond? I already gave my other... No, yes. not, it's not that. It has to do with a person in the industry. Uh, I don't know. Not slacker. Bud tender. Bud tender? Yeah, bud tender is the new word for the runner-up of the word of the year for Oxford Dictionary. And at the definitions is a noun. It's a person whose job is to serve customers in a cannabis dispensary or shop. Nice. <laughs> Hey, bro, I can't wait to be your bud tender. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of vape, uh, our friends over at Vapor Rage in Henderson on this Sunday night are having their, uh, their, their, uh, grand vape, opening? No, their, 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 uh, cloud contest, they're calling it. So they're inviting <laughs> everybody to, to come down Sunday night at seven and cloud out the vapor lounge. <laughs> but I don't think that they're talking about, uh, cannabis. I don't think they are either, but. And nobody knows what you're smoking in those pens, so. Right. Hey, maybe my buddy Keith can come get me. We could go cloud out that place. Oh, yeah. Billows and billows and billows of clouds, for sure. So we are we are coming up on the eve of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, yeah. Oh, that is coming up. But after that, Merry Marijuana. Pot Sellers Woo Holiday Shoppers. You stole my story. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. My bad. That's all right. So, they're going to be uh, some shops are angling for high end holiday shoppers, not an increase in foot traffic. Colorado Harvest and Evergreen timed the release of some top shelf strains of potent cannabis for the holiday season. Then they offer there's going to be some free gift wrapping. Free gift wrapping? Who? I, I'm not giving my butt away. The Growing Kitchen is making forty nine ninety nine gift sets for both medical and recreational users. The set includes the Edible Pot Maker's new Mighty Mint Cookie, a pot-infused confection new for holiday shopping season, along with cannabis-infused salvages for muscles sore from ski slopes. Oh, salves. They also have gift cards and can of gifts for the mail. Can of gifts for the mail? Can of gifts for the mail. Well, what would that be defined as? Uh, they're, they are non-cannabis gift items like t-shirts, rolling papers. Oh, you see, I thought you meant mail like is in human mail, not like through the mail. <laughs> You see, I'm blonde. Hey, hey. I'll be your kind of gift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the grass, the, the the grass station in Denver is doing a good old fashioned Black Friday door buster. They're selling an ounce of marijuana for fifty dollars. Fifty bucks. <laughs> Shut the front door. That's about a 
fifth of the cost of the next cheapest strain at the Colorado dispensary. Road trip. Oh, my goodness. Road trip. Lawrence, are we taking a road trip? Road trip. (laughs) But get this. It's to the first 16 customers in line on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, Friday, Saturday, and? Sunday. And in hey. case in case you're licking your lips at that fifty dollars, that works out to less than a dollar a joint. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That goes back to my old days in the eighties of three for five. Maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll put my cup out and sit on the corner again and people can give me money to grow arms. <laughs> <laughs> Field trip. Field trip. So and then you know with 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 Thanksgiving coming and, you know, the holidays, there's all sorts of sweets. Uh, sweets and marijuana seem to go together like hot chocolate and marshmallows. Many dispensaries this time of the year resemble a Starbucks at the mall with holiday spices and festive music in the air. One of the state's largest edible pot makers, Sweet Grass Kitchen, debuted a new miniature pumpkin pie that delivers about as much punch as a medium-sized joint. Oh, Raymond. The pie joins holiday spice teas, minty pot confections, and cannabis-infused honey oil for those who want to make their own pot goodies at home. All right, for you science fiction people, the pumpkin spice must flow. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, me as a patient and uh, using edibles is the the main form of my, you know, my treatment. That's the only form that really works to stop my pain. Um, Coming around the holidays here, it's always that time of the year when making all sorts of good goodies and, you know, making all your holiday cookies, you know, making them infused the way they should be. Well, exactly. I always know when Kurt is baking because I open the door and he looks baked. (laughs) And and I'm like, and I look at him and I go, honey, what's wrong? (laughs) Oh, you're baking again, sucker. Well, you know, you you can't just wash all that ooey gooey goodness down the sink. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The brownies, bro. Oh, oh did you like those brownies, Raymond? Oh. Wait, wait till the rum cakes come. Out. Oh, uh, speaking of all <laughs> these goodies, maybe our friends, all our bakers out there, don't forget we're having Thanksgiving this Saturday. You can find all the information on Meetup or our Facebook page. Come on down, all you wonderful chefs. I'm looking forward to sampling and bragging about your product. Maybe, maybe I'll make a rum cake for that. And, you know, as always, we, we talk to people about not um, not – imbibing in excess so that we're going to have little take-home containers for people because the fact is is that when you're there and you're sampling stuff and you're sampling stuff and you're sampling stuff then like makes it a little hard to get home sometimes about an hour later then i find people looking like they're freaking dabbed out i'll say it i i I know who you're talking you'll end up like raymond you'll miss your bus because you forget where you're going (laughs) Or you'll end up like Kurt or one of our other friends. Uh, she dabbed one time. And she says, oh, I have a pen. I dab regularly. And she took a hit off a rig. And she looked like she was just slumped on <laughs> over. And then she was trying to tell me, I can drive. And yeah, I was like, two no, hours, you can't. Two hours later, she was still looking like that. Yeah, and she's and like, I, I can make it home. And, and like, I no, told her, no, yes, you, you can. can. <laughs> Only with our help, we'll drive you. We'll drive you home. We'll I'm drive you so home. so wasted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just want to thank my friends from work for tuning in and listening tonight as <laughs> well. It's going to be an interesting day at work tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what They ask, what do you do for a living, Raymond, besides I teach? I didn't tell them what kind of radio show they wanted me. Somebody asked me to do something after school today. I was like, I'm sorry, I can't. I got to go to the radio station. They're like, oh, you got a radio show? Next thing you know, five people around me talking about what I do. And I'm like, just tune in. So to my colleagues, I thank you. (laughs) And next time you see his eyes at half mass, don't let him fool you. (laughs) Not during the school day. Thank you very much. I am responsible. That is true. You you are a responsible dad. You you, you have to set an example for the kids. You know, I mean, we, we talk about responsible use of medication, you know, responsible use with alcohol and everything you know i wouldn't expect the person that drives the bus that takes me to work to each day to you know use alcohol or get hopped up on a bunch of vicodins and everything else i just don't expect you know do that work that's for sure i mean i don't either for you know, after my students started seeing me on the news and people started seeing me on the news and people would come next to me and go and start sniffing and i'm like do I smell bad or something? And then I figured out what they were doing. They were trying to see if I was freaking, I, I was medicating before work. And I thought, you know, tough luck customers. I, I, I eat edibles. <laughs> yeah, much like my kids did after seeing me on first Friday. 
Oh, man. Oh, man. So. Uh, what do you got for us? I got a little no- news out of sports. Uh, a Raiders fan celebrates the first win of the season with an ice chest full of weed. Do they dump it on somebody? <laughs> what do they do? No, no. Well, you know, the downtrodden Raiders team has finally turned their season around on Thursday night, picking up a narrow victory over the Chiefs. Uh, the hard-fought win finally gave the team and Raider Nation a reason to celebrate. That would include Bay Area rapper Don Caglioni 4000, who clearly knows how to properly throw a tailgate party. Obviously preparing for a win, the rapper posted an Instagram picture of his cooler filled to the brim with a few beers and a massive amount of weed. Wow. <laughs> so the irony of having a cooler full of cannabis and beating the Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Uh, so next is our national entertainment uh, news and some announcements. We'll be back after this. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com you're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jennifer Solis, and this is Nevada Cannabis News. Joining me today is Kurt Dukoch, Raymond Fletcher, William Beach Baker, and, of course, Lawrence always makes me sound good on the board. All right, so straight into our entertainment news. The Kardashians make Dave Grohl stop smoking weed. What? I know, huh? <laughs> well, the front man, Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters, said that he was going to, you know, he, he, he started smoking cannabis again, but he returned to his drug habit after 25 years of being sober. But he freaked out because after he smoked one, he got stuck on watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians. And he thought, oh, my Lord. I don't want to do that anymore. That is the worst thing a stoner can do is get stuck watching them itches. I know, huh? I mean, seriously, I, the only the only way that I think I would start watching that, and I've never watched this except when Kurt is flipping past it, uh, the only way that I would watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians is if they have Bruce on in drag. Then I would start watching. Definitely. You could not pay me enough to watch those stuck up entitled witches. Okay. Duly noted. So that's why Dave Grohl says no more. He is not going to, he is not going to start smoking again in spite of his insomnia because he got stuck on the Kardashians. All right. Next for our entertainment news. What do you have, Kurt? Well, we all know who Bob Marley is, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Bob Marley's family is t- is uh, getting ready to launch a cannabis brand dubbed Marley Natural. Marley Natural? And Marley what is Natural. it? Are, aren't some of the relatives suing over that? I'm not sure. So the, the family of reggae icon Bob Marley and Seattle-based private equity firm said Tuesday they were launching the first global cannabis brand with marijuana products sold under a name long tied to the plant he lovingly called the herb. 
The brand dubbed Marley Natural marks the first time the family's name will adorn packages of cannabis products. They'll range from strains similar to those Bob Marley might have smoked in his homeland Jamaica to concentrates, oils, and infused lotions sold in countries and United U.S. states that have taken steps to decriminalize and legalize pot use and sales. All right. Does anybody, is anybody else kind of just sickened by this? I mean, I kind of am because, I mean, seriously, Bob Marley uh, stood for freedom. He stood for freedom for the plant and everything else. And to see this kind of corporate, uh, you know, branding. Takeover of his image? Yeah, corporate takeover and branding of his image for the plant when he fought so much for the freedom for the plant. It just kind of makes me a little bit ill. It makes me vomit a little bit in my mouth. I don't know because, I mean, we don't know what he would have, would have, would not have wanted. You know, on one hand, hey, I want to try that Bob Marley. You do? <laughs> well, I mean, seriously. But on the other hand, you know, it's... Well, his daughter, uh, Cedelia, uh, said in a statement announcing the deal that he viewed the herb as something spiritual that could awaken our well-being, deepen our reflection, connect us to nature and liberate our creativity but he nowhere did he say that the herb was connected to commercialism and you know and corporate sponsorship and you know money 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 i mean i don't think that that's not what barb marley stood for barb marley yeah. i don't know what barb marley stood for but why I know do you barb. always gotta why do you always gotta rankle me on t on on the radio because that's my job i know Okay, while, while you're thinking about Barb, uh, do we have any more entertainment news? Actually, we do. Tommy Chung's Dancing with the Stars dreams go up in smoke. <laughs> so who who watches Dancing with the Stars? Do you, Raymond? Or, or is that another show you refuse to watch? H-E double hockey sticks, no. You don't watch Dancing with the Stars? I don't know. Why? Why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch these shows either. Well, there's a lot of people who don't watch it and have been tuning in just to see Tommy Chong. So. Well, that's probably why they get these stars on there. People that, that would not normally watch their sto show get on there. Look, I got enough reality in my own life. I don't need to see it on TV. <laughs> this is the truth. Um, but he's been eliminated from the semifinal round of ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Um, basically, he has dance partner, uh, Peta, and I don't know what her last name even is, Murgatroyd, <laughs> uh, danced a jazz version of Soft Cell's Tainted Love, um, and performed a Roomba, and they were eliminated on Monday night. So, so sad to see you go, Tommy. Poor Tommy Chong and Megatron. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't the Megatroid already? All right. So in spite of in spite of being uh, a cannabis activist, Tommy Chung clearly took the competition seriously. They lasted 10 weeks um, and they impressed the judges with their charisma, their sense of humor and their entertaining personalities. And so um, they were eliminated. There we go. Do we have anything out of the world of entertainment? Anything else? I don't. I just have more politics. Do you have more politics? Well, tell us about politics. What's, what's going on? I'm politicking today. Most Republicans, boo, I'm still mad. Most Republicans in Congress don't want to stop D.C. marijuana legalization. Because well, they see the money, hopefully. Hopefully. It didn't take long after his, the historic legalization victory in D.C. before people turned their attention to Congress. Because remember, Congress has a say in how things move forward. Would Congress trample on the will of the voters in an attempt to block marijuana legalization from being implemented, much like they had done with medical marijuana for so many years? Eyes were especially, this is from Johnny Green at the Weed Blog. Eyes were especially on Republican members on, of Congress who historically have led the charge against cannabis reform. It appears that there is little interest on that side of the aisle in Congress to meddle with the recently approved law. According to the Washington Post, Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina said, to be honest, that's pretty far down my list of priorities. Senator Rob Portman stated, I haven't given it one thought. John, well, that's good. I mean, yeah. Maybe they're finally seeing the revenue for America in cannabis legalization instead of fighting it and putting people in prison. You're absolutely right. Even the robot, John McCain, <laughs> said he was focused on other things. One member of Congress is even going as far as to urge fellow members to embrace marijuana 
reform. The Republican congressman who re represents the land of Reagan, you know, all Republican idols, uh, however, wants marijuana legalized. After winning re-election in a landslide last week, despite the well-publicized position, Dana Rohrabacher uh, sent a letter to his party. He stated, to my fellow Republicans, wake up. The American people are shifting on this issue. Wake up and smell the weed. <laughs> All so, right. I got a little bit on the, uh, the science end here. Uh, there was a study that just appeared in the scientific journal called Molecular Cancer Therapies. Okay. Um, and it asked, can marijuana be used to cure cancer? Yes. 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 Advocates for a long time have claimed that it can, but had to rely on mostly anecdotal evidence. A new study provides some solid scientific ground. Researchers at St. George's University of London treated laboratory mice with THC and CBD, two active chemicals in cannabis called cannaboid, cannaboids, paired with radiation therapy. The result, they say, was a drastic reduction in the size of brain tumors. Did they do it with just cannabis alone or did they, it was all in conjunction with radiation? They either received cannabinoid treatment only, radiation only, or a combination of cannabinoid and radiation therapies, with a control group receiving no treatment at all. Um, Lou says combination treatment was the most beneficial, beneficial with the most dramatic effects. In some cases, the tumors effectively disappeared in the animals. Wow, right on. Effectively disappeared. Disappeared. Yeah. So now remind you, brain cancer has a 90% mortality rate in humans after five years. Lou hopes to improve these odds uh, with these trials. Well, uh, you know, the reason they use mice is because mice and rats have a very... Uh, have a very uh, short lifespan. It's two to three years only. And so the, as study models, they are, they're an excellent because they also carry g uh, genes that predispose them to tumors. I've never seen rats in genes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. More from our science. More from our science test. The active molecules in cannabis kill brain cancer. Um, scientists use an extract of a whole plant marijuana rich in pot's main psychoactive ingredients, THC, as well as cannabidiol, which is CBD. They show a dramatic reduction in tumor volumes um, of a type of brain cancer. Their high-grade glioma is one of the most aggressive cancers in adult humans, and long-term survival rates are very low as standard treatments for glioma re, uh, remain largely unsuccessful. I think this is what our friend Craig died from. Uh, is this type of brain cancer. Um, they've showed that cannabinoids have, have been shown to specifically inhibit glioma growth as well as neutralize oncologic processes as well as angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is preventing the spread or, or the promotion of that tumor throughout the body. Um, scientists think that a THC and CBD prime cancer cells to commit suicide, that's called apoptosis, when exposed to radiation. So um, tumors that are treated this way in mouse models for glioma show dramatic results. This is just what you were talking about. They're, they shrink to nearly one-tenth the size of tumors in the control group. So it just basically backs the science that you were talking about just now. All right, now, next up for our announcements. Kurt, what do uh, we got announcing well, this week? This Saturday, we got our Thanksgiving dinner with We Can. Check our website and our Facebook for information. It is a free event. We will be accepting donations to cover a cost of food. Um, that's from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday. That's right. We'll have um, a fire pit, don't forget. Yeah, we have a fire pit, so bring some wood and warm us up. Um, next Tuesday on uh, Nevada Cannabis News Hour, uh, we have a special, uh, special veterans access show with special guest Michael Krawitz who's a disabled U.S. Air Force veteran, uh, and he's going to be speaking about uh, what the VA says about veterans using medical marijuana what they're, uh, versus what they're actually doing. Next week uh, on the 3rd is the County Commission meeting. It's also North Las Vegas meeting at 6.30 p.m. on December 3rd. On the 5th, we have uh, final first Friday of the year. Come by the weekend booth from 5 to 11. And Check out our new swag. And be safe out there, everybody.